We're good? Yep. All right, let's do this. Dathan Ritzenhine, these digs, these are awesome. Tell me about, where are we right now? So right now we're sitting in the OAC gym that we've uh, been building out for the last year. So it was basically a little old art studio and uh, we took it over and slowly been putting in some uh, really expensive machines and stuff like that. And, um, but it's a good little home base for us. Uh, we meet here pretty much four days a week. We do our lifting, easy runs. There's great trails right here from uh, from the gym. We're in uh, we're right outside of a uh, Boulder, and so we can get onto the Res right away. Get onto Lobo Trail, and so we're here like pretty much all the time. And it's a little little office space back there. They get their treatments, all kinds of stuff from the physiotherapist. So it's a great little home base for us. How's the office coming along? What what are some of the things you're planning to put in there? The office is coming along slowest out of everything else. So and you can get some vi some video footage of uh, what that looks like if you want, but it's mostly just shoes and shoes and clothes right now. So this is the this is the office to me. <laughs> so year two of coaching OAC overall report card. What would you give it? Uh, the team's been just crushing it. I mean, uh, I'm really just I'm amazed at uh, what they were able to do. Um, you know the. The first year it was, you know, we launched in 2020 and there wasn't a whole lot of opportunities, but we took what came our way. We had some small meets and um, some, but some opportunities for the, for the, the talent to really show. Uh, we did the fun little mile up here with the boys and did uh, Music City and uh, a couple of the other ones, just the really low key races, but really just getting everybody to Boulder first. And so we assembled the crew and 2021 was the first year that we really had a chance to dig our uh, dig our hands into it and get everybody together and really put in a full year. And they were incredible. I mean, we got five people to Tokyo, and um, they really they took a massive leap in that first year. And um, you know, you 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 hope that you continue to have these these huge jumps, but it's also harder the better you get. And so this last year in 2022, I, I sometimes I got to pinch myself at how good they were. They just they really took it to the next level, and a lot of national records on for the team. Uh, you know, we've had we had national titles that were won. Um, uh, just you know, Ollie's race in in uh, Commonwealth Games. I mean, just I mean, there's honestly too many moments to even uh, to even recap. But they were they were incredible, and so uh, now we just I always say it every year. We just got to keep getting better, and but they're they're they've come a long way in two years. It's pretty incredible. So I got to see you. Right after Joe made the Olympic team at the trials last year, I saw you in tears. That's how emotional it could be as a coach. This year as well with Joe winning the national title, like you said, Ollie, you know, winning the Com Games gold medal. I guess for the people who aren't as familiar, can you describe just how emotional can it get as, as a coach? I, you know, I think for me, you have, well, we have 12 athletes now, and so, I'm fortunate we've had a lot of really good moments. I mean, probably way more good moments than bad. And so that's usually not, you know, that's not always the case, but uh, it, the, the hardest part for me is to deal with, you know, like those rare disappointments because whenever you, uh, whenever you have these, these great moments, I mean, you're celebrating all the hard work that was put in before. Um, and it is, it's like, it's just, just, it's nothing but hard work. And so you get a chance to showcase that, but if something goes wrong, that's really when it's, it's tough. Um, you know, for me, like, you know, our world champs was not the best meet for us by any means. I mean, that was really like one of the lower, one of the only low moments that we've had. And so that was harder for me to process, but you know, as the coach, I, I had to look at the things that we could do differently. And so, um, nothing you say can make a difference in the moment. So trying to look back and be not be reactive and think about the things we could do better. But I just try to be like a stable, you know, a stable person when it's when it's rough. But I celebrate when it's when it goes great. I don't hold back either because um, they put a lot into it and I put a lot into it. So we, we, we celebrate those moments. And so but you know, the competitions are really like just this little tiny 1% that you see. It's really the it's everything that goes on around it for uh, you know, day in and day out. I mean, we we're meet six days a week. We we don't take vacations. You know, like I don't anyway. <laughs> uh, I gave them about a month off, but they earned it. But it's it's just it's you know it's one of those things where it's not just uh, it's not just a career. It's not just a job. Like you don't leave it 
I don't leave it here at the gym. I mean, it's, it's kind of one of those uh, all-encompassing things. The family feels it. And so, um, so try to put in that kind of energy you know, each, each day. Um, I think it's important because the team feels the energy, you know, and they feed off of each other's energy. And so if I can elevate that and they can elevate each other, um, that's, that's what gives them the power when they go in, you know, when they go into the, when they go into the race, like they have the energy behind them. And, uh, but that's built up just like the training over the course of, you know, week in and week out. So like there was this big buildup for Worlds, right? And everyone had it circled on their calendar from, you know, after the Tokyo Olympics, basically. It's all systems go for world champs in Eugene. And you get off to a hot start during the indoor season, progress super well during the outdoor season. And then when world champs doesn't go as well as you'd hoped, like I kind of noticed it sort of that afterwards you have these other opportunities on the calendar, Com Games, European Championships, and if you've got your own family here in Boulder, there's, you decided to continue going to Europe and being there for a lot more of those moments, and I guess what went into, what factored into that, like most other coaches, I guess, in the past, you know, when these, these are pro runners, you can let them go do their own thing, go off to Europe, they know how to handle the circuit here and there, maybe an agent's with them you know, occasionally, but you were with a lot of these athletes for those redemption moments. Was that important? I think it was really important to be with them after the hardest moments because, yeah, I, I was tired at the end of the season too, uh, but, uh, I questioned a little bit, you know, like, did I do something wrong in the training that led up to the uh, the world champs because they had ran so well for the year before? But we had that we had a meeting afterwards, like real heart to heart, you know, and talked about these things and talked about the redemption that we could stop, you know, like they, we can build, we can just look to next year. But I I just didn't think I thought that they were ready, and I said let's make something out of it, and so they came out like swinging again and. They all close their season great. I mean, the like, Com Games, European Champs, Diamond League Final, like they they had I they were fit, you know. And so I, I had to take away the lessons of that race and there's things I will change going forward and um, them too. Like th those are hard learning moments, but for me it was important to be with them and say, like, yeah, I'm I'm disappointed with that too, but like if I just stay here, yeah, I'm tired, but I want more. Like I know we're better than that, and I'm going to be there too with them. And I think I think it meant a lot, you know. It meant and it meant though it made those moments mean a lot too. And so, um, yeah, it's it's uh, spending time with them is super important. Without doing that, you don't know exactly. You you can't form that that great that great bond and connection. And so, um, yeah, I hope we don't have too many times so you have to do that. But at the same time, I think it was super important for me this year and for them. Is that sort of like, would year one, Dathan as the coach have been as sort of suited to cope with this much sort of, not total disappointment, but be, being able to put those pieces back together with his athletes? Yeah, I think it was validation for, you know, that their training was good and that they were fit and they were ready. And so, but also remembering like their, their expectations have grown so much because of how good they've done. I mean, two years ago, we would have never even had these conversations. Like, they weren't even on the radar for any of them. And they've gotten so much better now that the expectations elevated too. And so we were catching up to the expectations that we were creating. And so, uh, you know, it's a good thing. They were running well enough to get to that point. But also, maybe we weren't all, like, emotionally ready for that moment. So, you know, for me going in, going forward, and for them, you learn a lot from those moments. And so um, I know as an athlete I did, um, as a coach I have now, and I think this year that was super important for them because now we go in knowing exactly what it's like to have ex expectation on your back, to go in knowing you're ready and to execute. And so I think, uh, you know, focus is very important. And so sometimes you ride a just a wave of enthusiasm, but also you have to know that you know, that's not always the case, and you have to just trust the fitness and, um, and be focused very much on, on the most important thing. And so while well, they had great years and stuff like that, the whole years were amazing. Um, we're going to be better on that, 
day mm -hmm. that matters the most in the future. And I think that that's something that we learned from this this past summer. So the team's at a dozen members now. How much bigger are we gotten? <laughs> We're up to 12. And uh, yeah, I, I, I like the size of the team, but it's a it's growing like you feel everybody, and so we're we're very you know meticulous about who we bring into the team now. Um, so I I think we will tone down our recruiting process for sure and be very selective. But they're all very young runners for the most part. So like these these are athletes we've invested heavily to Paris and L.A. and thinking of what they can do over the next two and six years. And so. Uh, for us, I think we're, we're at a point now where we've built a really solid foundation. We're trying to create the infrastructure around the team to continue to, to sustain that. Um, and then now we just bring in the, like the, the final missing pieces and whatever athlete those are. You know, like I, I personally want to build the women's side quite a bit right now. Um, that's something that I, I think that um, you know, we, we have a really good foundation. We have a few more men, though, and I want to get that pretty equal right now. Um, and so I just think that we we have to just sit back and, like, we really have to observe the landscape and say that athlete is the next athlete we want on the OAC or this person fits, like, that mold. And whereas before, you know, before you have results, you're selling yourself hard. I mean, you're like, like when the, the early athletes on this team I mean, Joe, Alicia, Ali, Jordy. I mean, we were we were selling them on something that wasn't there yet, and it was leap of faith. Now the results are there. They they, it's it's something that uh, we don't have to do that as much. We still do it because we're proud of it. Like I'm very proud of what we've created, and and I think it's unique. And um, but we want the right people that really buy into that now. And so for me. Uh, we identify talent like really specifically really early now and uh, yeah it's uh, it's it's fun to do it differently too now we don't have to you know shoot at everything we just we, we, we take our right opportunities so there's probably like a college senior junior maybe even a freshman who's like hey I like this team I want to run for them someday what does it take to be in that position to be in consideration for a spot on OAC well, you know, I, we don't have definitive team standards, I guess. Um, you know, we, because that, that evolves, you know, like times, times honestly to me are meaningless. I, I don't really care. They're going to run fast, you know, that that's just, if they're good, they're going to run fast. The opportunities are there. I want like, like people who are competitors. And so that, that's something that um, you see in, in like in individual races. And if you see that person, they don't have to win everything, but if they want, if they have the fire, the passion, you know, like when we signed Yared, for example, it's like that, that guy has something where he likes to win. You can tell, like, like Centro had that thing where he liked to win, you know, like, and I like that, you know, I like that because if they get into the big races where it's a Diamond League meet, you know, they're going to be competitive, they're going to sniff it, they're going to, like, Mario ran 330 and, and Eugene was fourth, you know, like, after, on his 30 eighth race of the year or whatever like they there's like a sense of uh there's just a competitor in there and so uh you know like i can see that every time ollie lines up you know like you know, like when joe won you know he beat grant i mean grant had the most amazing year but joe really wanted it and that's the thing that you want to have in an athlete and so going forward i want to see those athletes that you say that that person like maybe they don't they you're not going to do it every time but they can go to the well if they have to that's the kind of athlete mm -hmm. we want I think of you towards the end of your career when you know you battled through these injuries, you signed that final contract, and you think maybe I still have that one or two last good marathons and maybe give the Olympic trials one more shot. It was a little bit of like a resurrection project, right? Yeah. Would you be willing to take something like that on? I know it's like an older athlete, maybe a person who's like, you know, kind of had their ups and their downs, but like, I feel like you would yeah. have kind of a little bit of a playbook to work off of that. Yeah, you know, the last years of my career, I mean, if like, if, if there's a person that like, I would bury bodies in the swamp for, it'd be Kevin Hansen. <laughs> you know, like, I mean, he gave me the years at the end when I didn't maybe even have the belief in myself. and. So I have a like a soft spot in my heart for that, you know, like we did that with Leah, like she was ready to be done and really brought her back to 
a super high level, like higher than she had been. And so I have a, you know, like that, you know, uh, soft spot, but it's also there that, like now I have to think about what's the, what's the whole of the team. And, and if we have a team of you know, young, mid 20 somethings people, like I want the people to, you know, to be in the right situation. So absolutely the right person comes along and I say that person has like amazing potential. Maybe, it, and maybe it's something like the marathon even, you know, like, like they haven't, they haven't gone to the place where they, they can go. Yeah, then I still think about that person. But, um, but I think that uh, the nice thing is if we see those people like, yeah, we, there's a lot of them we, we, I could be a super fan and I said, but it's just not the right fit. It's not the right place. Um, but they have to be pretty malleable into our system, I think mm -hmm. now too, which is, that's a hard thing. Like, like if there's success that's working and you know that, um, that they have to be in an environment with this team, that this is really a team. Like people really want to be here six days a week with everybody else. If you don't want to do that, it's not the right place. And so, and it's okay. Like I got like that later in my career too. And, and I wish I could go back and read, undo that. Like where, but as you get older, you get more set in your ways. That's what happens when your, your grandparents, they do whatever the heck they want. You know, like old athletes are the same usually, but you know, as a coach, it's your job to take the emotional part out of those things and say, this is the right thing that needs to be done for you athletically. And so that's a hard thing to do. And so um, I'm more hesitant on mm -hmm. that than a young athlete coming out of school because if you haven't been in a pro situation before, all you know is your college, you know, coaching system. And so I like people to come in and with a blank slate. And so if an, if an older athlete can do that, then absolutely, you know, like, but it takes some real, uh, you know, some real uh, introspection to be able to do that. And, you know, even at the end of my career, I could tell, like, I wanted those things, but I didn't quite have the same, like, fire that mm -hmm. I had when I was younger. I could go to, like, the, the deep spots, like, occasionally, but not every time. And so that's another thing, like, you have to really want it, I mm -hmm. think. And so to me, like, that's probably more important than, like, desire. If they're, if they're talented, they'll be good, you know, yeah. like, but if they desire, they can be great, you know, and that's something you can't always coach. Like, that has to be there. So I want to touch on the biggest addition to the team recently, Helen O'Beary joining the squad. Can you, I guess, like, oh, we spoke back in January, I think right after the news came out, but let's catch some people up on how this all came together and, like, this all-time track talent falling into your hands. Yeah, I'm... I gotta say, like having worked with Helen now for the last, last bit, she is an all-time talent, like an amazing, amazing runner. And we knew that from her results, obviously. Um, but you know, it, it kind of started with uh, we knew that she actually had uh, um, had put in her application and had been approved for citizenship, and she wanted to already move to Boulder. She was friends with Edna Kiplagat, and she had the desire to do that already. If it weren't for that, it probably wouldn't, you know, like we probably wouldn't have been interested, but she had shown that before we ever were interested or thought there was a chance to sign her. So that alone told us, hey, this is a really good potential right here. And so, uh, you know, I had a lot of discussions with her agent and, you know, her former coach, you know, Ricky, and he, I mean, sometimes you don't know if a coach is BSing you. And some of the stuff he would tell me, I don't know, but I'll tell you, he was telling me the truth. Like, you know, like pretty incredible training. And, you know, like I've known Ricky for a long time in the business and he, him and me, I guess, he has a maybe respect for the attention to detail things that maybe aren't possible in the situation that she was in originally. And so I think having a hands-on coach was uh, something that they were excited about as she moved towards the marathon because there's so many little things that can be can be changed and so you know she came to Eugene and you know like for example just off pure talent she probably should have won that race I'm just going to go out and say it on the record like I think she should have won that race um, but she did that on three four weeks of you know just getting on the track again she had no you know, like plans to do that really but she was like oh, I feel pretty fit I'm going to do the world champs <laughs> so um, you know so I think for you know for her you know she She's wanted to be here sooner, but it's just it's it's very difficult with the visa situation. So we're getting close now uh, for a permanent solution. Mm -hmm. And but she's been here now training with us with me. 
um, the team all went on vacation. So I, I felt a little bit bad because at first she came and it was like the only time when we're not meeting was that month. So it was just me with her very early in the morning, a lot of days, and uh, but now the team's back. It's good. Like she's, uh, you know, she's able, she's staying with some of the the team members, and so it's it's uh, it's good to integrate her. But yeah, she's an incredible talent. Uh, I it's good for me to see what's capable, what's possible. I mean, it's funny. I've told some people around town some of the some of the sessions that she's done, and they're like, it's not believable. You know. <laughs> so I said, okay, well, we'll find out in New York. <laughs> so. You know, most other jobs, most other jobs, people having to wake up at 5 or 6 a.m., like, it's like, don't talk to me until I've had my coffee. It takes the first couple hours to kind of really get into the groove with things. When you wake up knowing you've got to get on a bike next to Helen O'Beary, how do you feel? <laughs> well... You know, getting up with Helen at 5 a.m. to do training is taking a little bit of adjustment. <laughs> She's starting to come our way a little bit, so it's like 50-50 now where I, I'm up with her at, you know, like, I, I'm, the thing that was working on my side is we're moving towards winter, and so it's getting darker later, so she has to go a little bit mm -hmm. later, but uh, she's, uh, yeah, it's, I'm, honestly, every morning I wake up, I was like, I wonder what Helen's going to do to in, in, amaze me today, because that's <laughs> what she does, and so, um, so I think, for me, I'm excited about that. Um, it's you know, it, it's interesting to see, and I think it's also, I'm I'm motivated for like our athletes like Alicia and Joe, who I know will be marathoners because I'm seeing what Helen can do, and the training that she does, and knowing that Joe and Alicia will be there in a few years, like what's possible? Who you know, like that's that's exciting because. You know, I think we're seeing it right now in women's marathon. Like, there's the we're on the brink of some pretty amazing things. Helen's going to be in the mix of that stuff. Like, it's it's going to happen, and it makes me, it also makes me, I'm a believer, and you know, like I give people the benefit of the doubt. A lot of the things that I see, she can do it. I'm sure some others can too. You know, like I think she's just as talented as anybody. But uh, yeah, she just she trains incredibly hard, very focused, and it, it's just very talented. So. Um, you put those things together on a special day and amazing things are going to happen. And so uh, I, I think, you know, I'm glad she's running New York because I think New York's the biggest stage. It's going to be awesome. She's a real competitor. Like the biggest thing is holding her back all the time. She can press, press, press. So like holding back is a big thing. So I think that's important in the marathon. But part of me is like, oh, man, I kind of wish we ran London or Berlin because I think she can run like really fast right now too. So we can save that for later. New York's the focus right now, though, and I think uh, she is completely dialed in for that. You're excited. Stress and, like, pressure, does that ever get to you, knowing that this once-in-a-generation talent is on you? Now that you put it that way, <laughs> um, I, you know, that's, I, I, I think I operate well in a high-stress environment. So, like, that's just been the case for, that's pro running, you know, like, and so, um, yeah, you never know with the marathon. Like things happen metabolically after you know 35k that you just can't know until you're in the race. But I feel very confident in her, you know, her ability. Like getting her to healthy like these last few weeks now. That's to me like goal number one because she's ready physically to run well. And so I don't have any doubts. Like somebody else, maybe somebody else is going to be better on the day, but she will. I think she can run well. You know, like no matter what. I, and so. I think uh, now holding her back is so important because all the confidence building things have been there. All the, like the volume is, has been great. Uh, her long runs in, are amazing, which like that was maybe one thing I thought she was lacking. I don't have worries there anymore um, after seeing her this last, you know, five, six weeks now. I have no worries there. I, like the ability is there and track wise, like, if if she has the legs, nobody can run that fast at the end. Like, yeah, it's it's not doesn't it's not always the kicker, you know. But like she she has a lot of power still. Like we saw it in Eugene, and so she's coming right off of that right now. So as long as as long as the fuel's in the body, then I think she's she can run something really really impressive at the end. Well, see, that was what I was going to kind of bring up. It's you watch Ellie Kipchoge, perfect form the whole entire time. You when you watch Helen. It's more so that she's a force in that last 
lap or last 600 meters. She's really going to the arms. What's, how's her form or anything physical going to translate to the marathon and on the roads? Is there, are there any major changes or like, how's that going to look? I will say a lot of, there's a lot of things I want to change with Helen for sure in the future, but I don't believe in just going out and taking something that's not working either. And just because she's got the big arms, I mean, I'm going to say it's maybe it's just a maybe it's just an advantage that drink bottle goes straight to her face like she can you know she can go to the hands like no one else but she's very efficient at the lower body and if she's relaxing like she you can tell when she's pressing sometimes it, it her her stride is just exaggerated anyway but like I I'm not going to tone that down right away like I think that she can use that over the course of the marathon and if she bonks at the end then maybe we go there, but what I'm seeing from her in training tells me that she's going to be able to translate that power and that if, that out of that stride, you know, over to the marathon. And you know, at the end of the day, the marathon is mental; it's about relaxing. And she's a very focused person. And so, um, if I can get her to wait, I mean, I'll, I don't know when this is going to air, but if I was, uh, you know, like uh, one of the competitors, coach, I would tell them to make it fast early because you never know. Because if if it's slow and it's a fast last 10K, there's not going to be, I don't think there's going to be anybody <laughs> that's going to be able to hang. So um, we'll see if, I don't know when you're airing this, but, you know. <laughs> so <clears throat> I think one of the funniest things when you watch these major marathons is that after the winter crosses the finish line, it's like they're still standing on their two feet. They get draped in, you know, their flag and they're, it's very their recovery has already sort of started the pain hasn't settled in yet in the day in day out of practice you get to see those moments where it's after a hard session hands on the knees catching their breath they need their moment what's that been like i guess for you to have like a front row seat to see and push helen to those limits i you know honestly i said today was the first time that i finally felt like i got her tired <laughs> she she finished. I haven't seen the hands on the knees yet. Maybe it's a cultural thing, but she doesn't show that. You know, like she she gets done with these really fast long runs, and she just kind of. I say, how was this is her thing? I say, how how was it? She says, not too bad. That's her that's her thing. You know, so we have a little joke now. You know, I say, how you doing? Not too bad. She said, not too bad. So she's. But today she said, uh, finally, like this is, uh, we, we put things a little closer together. And she said, I said, how did it feel? She said, the first one, it was like 2K, 1K workout. So the first one, I, it was supposed to be 75s. She said, 75s felt like 65s. But then by the end, she's running way faster than I, you know, than I told her. So she, I think she's starting to finally feel, you know, that six, eight weeks of pretty specific work which is good. I like that because before I was like, I, I honestly wasn't comfortable giving her more than, than what I was, you know, and she didn't never, she never failed at anything. She didn't look overly exhausted. And so I was kind of almost happy today to see her say, oh, it, it felt hard to start. But then by the end, I felt pretty good. You know, so. What's a not too bad marathon? For her? I mean, I think I will be disappointed if she's not on the podium. I think she would definitely be. Um, New York can be anything, honestly. Like course record is 222. I think it's often been run. It's been run in the upper 220s quite often. But you know, if it's relatively fast, I mean, I think she can run significantly under the course record. It's just uh, you know, if it catches a good day and it's fast early, I mean, I'm not going to tell her to push it early. So like, uh, I'll give that away. I I think you know you got to. You got to be cautious early on because it's it is something that you know you have to have that healthy fear. Uh, my first marathon, I was with the leaders to 20, and I barely made it in. I think it was 7:30 the last mile, and it was miserable. And so being you know ready for that, you know, I think is is important and and respecting the the distance because sometimes we overthink it. You know, like the marathon is just another race, but there is a metabolic component that makes it different. You know, you. If you go way too fast, you will pay for it, you know, and it will be really bad. You can go a little too fast and survive, and so, uh, but yeah, you. I don't think she wants to be the aggressor early on. I mean, you want to, you want to get in your first one and race it and make it more just 
like a race and not have to think about any anything else like she's not going to be looking at splits i'll tell you that like she she doesn't if i tell her that then you know she'll run those splits but yeah she's not she often doesn't even hit her watch you know she just goes based on an, an intuition and a feel and i'll tell her if i i'm watching the splits and say hey slow it down back it off you know and but otherwise yeah like that's that's just who she is she's a competitor and that's why we chose new york like a marathon with no uh there is no, uh, you know, no pacemakers. It's just a race. And so, you've got this stable of young athletes in their twenties who maybe need that last-minute guidance. And we've spoken to, you know, Ollie and Morgan and Jordy about just how different the, each one of them are and how you approach that pre-race final moment, a little bit of instruction, whether they need it or not. Helen just seems like the type of athlete that. Maybe you don't even need to take this trip to New York. What, what are you hoping to, you know, be there for her, like in New York? What, what, what's the plan with her? I think the coach being there always matters, yeah. even if you don't say anything, because it's like there's like a language there where you've been through the things, you've seen the things, you know this person's in your corner, and so that's something that I think is important no matter what. And yeah, there may be the occasional situation where you can't be there, but the New York City Marathon in her debut, I'm going to be there. <laughs> She's never done it. Uh, you know, like there's all this stuff, like the bottles. Like there's all these things that you go from this training camp here where it's me and her, and now the team's coming back, you know, too, and she's with them. But it's me and her, and it's very quiet. Everything's built around the two runs a day to New York City where it just feels busy. You feel like you're on your feet all the time. And... So if I can alleviate a little bit of that, help her get the bottles, those things, and then you walk them to the, that's the thing about New York, you walk them to the bus, and at coaches and managers, they don't go to the start. It's like the only one. And you say, all right, good job, and they're on her. She'll be fine, I know she will. Like she's so seasoned, like she's been a world-class athlete for a decade now. But yeah, for it's before that. It's the, you know, you put those people in your corner and you know that there's people there behind you because it, you're out there no matter what, but it's just that last bit of alleviating any stress and just that little bit of confidence of the people that, you know, like you got people that have your back. I think that's super important. Without giving away secrets, what has Helen's week look like? Is, you know, how have you structured that? So I'd spent a lot of time talking to Ricky, you know, and he said it was great. He sent me training documents for the last couple of years, basically. So I had a lot of time going through her training and seeing what she's used to. And, you know, the Kenyan style of training is definitely different from Westerners. And I'll say, I think after spending some time with her, sometimes we do overthink things a little bit. Um, you know, I think for her, the biggest thing is initially I tried to keep her on a, somewhat of a similar schedule weekly but i just i was a little uncomfortable with the density of the training mm -hmm. you know with how big the sessions were getting so i started to move it out a little bit more for her over after the first couple of weeks i said let's i looked at some of these sessions i'm like you're you're fit you're ready like let's just let's spread out the recovery just a little bit and and so for her she's very used to doing the track workout on this day, the, the fart lick on this day, the long run on this day, and you don't deviate. But I think that that's something that, you know, like we can definitely do to avoid little things and just to get her feeling like, like I don't want her to be too fresh for some of these workouts. Like I talked to, honestly, that's one of the things I, I asked Kevin Hansen, you know, I was like, I'm, I'm trying, I'm going to try to keep things, you know, like keep her a little bit more tired before the sessions because she's doing them so impressive, like so hard. I don't want her to go that hard, you know, like, and so, I think that's probably the biggest thing. I, I, I spread out the density a little bit on the training now. And so I, she doesn't, if the race was in five days, she'd be ready. And so I don't want her to get to the point where she wishes that it was, you know, two or three weeks ago. She's getting better on all these sessions, but I want her to, to, still, to, to still feel like she's doing the sessions that are, maybe she's getting a little bit out of them, but she's also not going negative, which I think you can easily do in the marathon. So ahead of this race i've been part of like the broadcast calls and they're already dubbing her as like the biggest debut that the new york city marathon has had for the common fan who maybe might be tuning into espn that morning i guess like can you describe just like how special watching helen run her first marathon is going to be 
Well, you know, I think what we, we don't see it sometimes, like Kipchoge, for example, is a, he's very different from some people. Like he had this big, long track career where he, a lot of people maybe thought he waited too long to go to the marathon, but then he's just been flawless since. I think Helen can be like that. A lot of athletes just go straight to the marathon. No track PBs, nothing. And Helen, she's fast. She has like national record for Kenya and the 5K and the mile and things, but she's never been like a time trial. Like maybe she didn't care about that as much. Maybe it was, you know, shoe tech, things like that. But she's certainly capable of those things, but she just thrives on the competition. And so I think we're going to see someone who's, I think the only woman to win world champs outdoors, indoors, world cross. I think she's going to translate that to the roads. And I, you never know that first one, it's a lot of learning, but I think she's, I think she's going to do something that's, that shows what's going to happen over the next couple of years too. And she's got a lot of great competitors out there now. I mean, uh, women's marathoning is starting to elevate to a level that, uh, it's super exciting, and I think she is excited by that too. Like, it's not going to be a runaway by any by any means. There's good competition there, but I think she has the talent to be the best in the world in the marathon, just like she's been the best in the world in track and you know cross country as well. So that's exciting. I think it's just scratching the surface. Like, even some people might not know this, but because she's been you know she's been a world class athlete for a decade. She didn't really start training seriously until she was like 21. She was like a late bloomer. And so I think there's a lot of years in there. Like we were looking at Edna Kiplegat's 42, and she's still, you know, should be the Boston champion. She is the Boston champion. And I think we can see that kind of career maybe with Helen. And so that's exciting to me. Last thing for me. How familiar are you with the New York City subway? What's your plan on race day for like getting around? Is it like the, just the city bike? What are you going to do? Well, I ran New York three times myself, and uh, so I have no idea what to do from uh, when, when you don't have your racing flats on. Um, I remember kissing my loved ones and coach and agent goodbye at the bus and getting on the bus and being out there myself. And so I think uh, I'm not sure what I'm going to do. I'm not sure if I'm going to run around or if I'm going to go to the room and watch it, you know, or, or what. I, I guess I want to just get there, get her situated have her get on that bus and then yeah it's not about me it's about her after that and so like I'll I don't think anything I ever yell matters to my team you know like it's really for me um, but they're out there for them and so if we can get her to that point and she's ready to go on race day uh, yeah maybe maybe it's going to be in my hotel room maybe it's in the maybe it's yelling on the on first ad when they run down I don't know but I'm, I'm just excited hey we got 20 days from today when we're doing this interview and I can't wait to, to, to start to taper her and see what she's, uh, she's going to do in New York. Well, regardless, I have subway tips for you if you need them. But, <laughs> Nathan, I appreciate you taking the, the time for this. Cool. Thanks. Sweet. All right. Nice. Sweet.